Just on the edge of Baltimore's Inner Harbor, a team of scientists from the Institute of Marine and Environmental Technology have gone fishing, but not in these waters. There you go. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, yeah, let me help you. So we are very nervous right now because this has never been done before. And we just recently submitted many samples from over the last year to analysis, to sequencing, to sequencing the genome on the skin of the fish. Hidden within the sleek facade of IMET, thousands of fish representing a diverse array of species are born, raised, studied, and harvested in indoor tanks. Dr. Jonathan Zohar, professor of marine biotechnology at UMBC, has been studying these indoor aquaculture systems for the past 40 years. And we here at IMET, at the Aquaculture Research Center, are trying to address all these challenges, bottlenecks, hurdles to this industry, so it can become economically feasible, as well as obviously as much as possible environmentally responsible. But with an investment of $10 million from the USDA, Dr. Zohar and his team of scientists are angling for something a bit different, a land-based fish farm called a recirculating aquaculture system that addresses the challenges faced by traditional offshore fish farms, such as environmental pollution and waterborne diseases. Aquaculture has become the world's fastest growing sector of agriculture. Our bottom line is developing new platform of environmentally responsible fish growing aquaculture operations. This team's investment in the environment begins with water. All dirty water is filtered, cleaned, and reused again and again. But what happens to the waste in the water? The goal here is to get rid of that waste, reduce it, and turn it into a product that can be used. Dr. Kevin Sowers has been spearheading the team's research into utilizing lab-grown bacteria. Housed in countless plastic circles, drifting throughout the water filter to filter dirty water and release methane gas, which is burned and converted into raw energy. In other words, this facility is powered by fish poop. And the product we produce, the biogas, will actually help power about 10% of the energy costs here in the facility. With this process, most waste products never enter the ocean or Baltimore's inner harbor. But to make this program economically feasible, Dr. Zohar will have to think small. These salmon eggs, spawned right in this facility, mark a little triumph for the IMET scientists who have overcome the challenge of breeding salmon in captivity. Salmon usually is a very seasonal spawner, and we are using environmental manipulation to phase shift, to change the time of the spawning of the fish so the farmer can get eggs, good quality eggs, all year round. Wild salmon swim upstream to spawn, so to trick the fish's reproductive cycle and significantly increase yield, Zohar alters the salinity of the water and the lighting in each tank. Extended daylight simulates long summer days, gradually dimming to mimic nightfall. These alterations in the cycle trick the fish into perceiving a different season. Yeah, I'm gonna climb in and we're gonna check and see indication of egg development. Okay, one, two, three, go. For the success of this breeding program, the proof is in the pudding. So these researchers will need to snag an expecting mother. But to check her for eggs, they will first need to calm her down. So they dunk her in an anesthetic bath to render her unconscious. We're trying to anesthetize them as, as softly as possible, as little as possible, so she doesn't suffer. Now she is all ready for her ultrasound. Yeah, to the left of the stomach are the ovary. Those are the eggs. 
right there. Yeah, this is all the egg mass. Success! This fish is pregnant months early. And these fish are going to be spawning, as we expect them, about six months after the natural spawning season, which is the best outcome that you can get. If you can do it six months, you can do it four months, three months, all year round. Leading from this groundbreaking Maryland Research Center, Dr. Zohar hopes to inspire the emergence of similar programs across the United States, providing new jobs and fresh salmon for landlocked states. For someone who has been working on aquaculture for over 40 years, well, I have a lot of energy still to make sure that we make this happen, that, you know, we, we stop overfishing our oceans and we satisfy the increasing demand of seafood in the United States and in the world. Thanks for watching Maryland Farm and Harvest. We hope you liked the video. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on future videos. To learn more about our show and watch full episodes, check out mpt.org farm or just click the link in the description.